Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to this channel. So, so happy that you are joining me today. Guys, and I'm smiling compared to the title of this video, but you actually have to smile. You actually have to cultivate joy in your life, even if you're going through it. That's something that God has been teaching me lately. My heart is to encourage you and whoever is in the waiting season of life right now, in that room where they are desperately asking God questions and wondering if God is even answering them or if God is even hearing them. I want to give you some words that will strengthen you as well as teach you about this season you're in. Why do we have to go through a waiting season and how can we wait well? It's super important to know, to understand spiritual principles so that we can navigate life so much better rather than remaining in a place of like, you know, even if you're uncertain, you can still have a certain um, assuredness that stems from knowing who God is, even when you don't know what is happening right now, okay? So without further ado, let's get right into the video, but do make sure to like this video, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. We have to actually put into practice this trust that we say that we have in him are you still going to be devoted to him to be faithful to him or are you only going to focus on what he hasn't given you yet the fact that you haven't received something from your parent doesn't mean that they don't love you it doesn't mean that they prefer another child over you it just means that there might be a reason why it hasn't been answered yet and those reasons can be varied and I've, I've made a video about the reasons why your prayers could be hindered um, which is also good to know because you could be waiting on something but really it's something that you might not even be meant to have or if it's something that you are meant to have then maybe it's just a matter of time and being patient in God's timing. It's God's greatest work happens not only in changing our circumstance but actually changing us in the midst of our circumstance. Deeper In Isaiah 40 verse 31 um, you know, it talks about waiting. Now, this this waiting is not a passive waiting. It carries the idea of eager anticipation through faith or looking forward with confident expectation. It's not just sitting idly by and just hoping and trusting. Like, it's actually active. So let's look at some of the reasons why God actually makes us wait. Number one, He's actually developing our characters. Gold is refined by fire. Our faith is refined through the waiting season. In James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 we read, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that she, you may be complete and perfect, wanting nothing. So it's important to know that God is not just working in your circumstance, in your external situation, but he's also trying to actually work in you. And by God working in you, you are being better prepared to receive that which you are praying for. Maybe this version of you right now is not equipped to handle what you're actually praying for. And God knows this. God doesn't want you to sabotage or to not even manage well what you're trying to receive from him. So maybe he's trying to work in more patience in you, more strength in you, more joy in you. So many different characters that if you actually open your eyes to see, God, what lesson are you trying to teach me here? You can really use the waiting season well. And I'm going to talk more about that in this video. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, Paul tells us that being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. That means God is going to bring everything that he has begun in you to completion. He's actually committed to you. He's actually committed to you. He's committed to working in you. And that work sometimes will require waiting. Joseph had to wait 13 years. He had to endure slavery, imprisonment, like accusation, so many different things before his dream of becoming a leader was actually fulfilled. But during this time, God was shaping him into the leader that he needed to be, into the man of strength that he needed to be to lead a nation. God had to, you know, that's those situations, though uncomfortable, though hard, though confusing. I'm sure it was even isolating for him at times. Like he had to go through it and grow through it as well. The second reason is that waiting aligns our will with God's will. We try so hard to try to mend or 
bend God's will to fit ours, our plans, our ideas, our visions, the plans that we have for our lives. But actually, if you're a Christian and you're God's daughter, he wants you to follow his plan for you. He has a design for you, like a, a script or a life script that he wants you to follow. But if you're so obsessed with your idea of what you think your life should be, then sometimes a prayer that isn't answered will look like God doesn't love you. Meanwhile, it's out of love that he's actually trying to realign you with his will for you realign your footsteps change your gaze direct your steps and so in this waiting season be praying as well that god would align you so that you would surrender to his perfect will for you for you the third reason is waiting prepares us for god's blessings the last reason is waiting increases our appreciation okay when you actually receive what you've been waiting for you you would literally be so 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 grateful and value that thing and um sometimes if you actually receive something too lightly or too easily like you might not actually realize the value of it like if something comes too easily like you didn't pay a price for it but when you have persevered in prayer when you have contended and done gone through the spiritual warfare in prayer and god answers you like you will be so grateful because you get to experience god's power even more you get to experience the fact that your prayers brought about victory the fact that you learned how to even pray better like just so much that that can be developed in us spiritually in the waiting season psalm 40 verse 1 to 3 tells us i waited patiently for the lord and he inclined unto me he heard my cry he brought me up also out of a horrible pit out of the mary clay he set my feet upon a rock and he established me he puts a new song in my mouth even praise unto our god many shall see it and many shall trust in the lord so waiting is hard it can be painful it can be frustrating you can even shake our faith but how so waiting is hard, it can be frustrating, it can be painful, it can even shake your faith. But now let's talk about how do we actually wait well. There is a wrong way of waiting and there is a right way of waiting. Number one, stay in the word. The Bible is filled with stories of people who waited on God. Abraham had to wait before he was able to have his child. This is waited 40 years in the desert before leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. David waited years before he could actually become the king, though he was anointed years prior. The next thing to do is to pray consistently. You cannot get through this season well without praying. When it feels like he's not listening, keep praying. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 8, Jesus tells us the parable of the persistent widow and she kept going to the king she kept asking and asking and finally the king gave in to her and gave her what she wanted and that lesson is for us to always to pray and not to faint because you just don't know when your breakthrough is literally right around the corner the thing to do is to surround yourself with faith-filled people when your when your faith is wavering you need to be surrounded by people who will actually encourage you and give you you know words that will strengthen you you don't want people to actually pull you down or put the word that of doubt in your mind or make you to doubt god or words that will make you to doubt god or words that will make you feel like yeah, there's no point in even praying. You want to be surrounded by the right people in your waiting season. So keep serving God. Look, you didn't start serving God because of what you could receive from him. You didn't start serving God literally to get a reward or to get a blessing. You're serving God because we are called to serve God. Jesus was a servant. We're walking in the, um, the example of Christ. We should have a servant's heart naturally in and out of season to help people, to, to, to minister to people, to be of help where needed in your church, in your family. Like all of that shouldn't stop because God hasn't answered your prayer. Like that means that you are not doing those things genuinely. Like continue to serve God, continue to be faithful in your devotion and spending time with him. Like Galatians 6 verse 9, do not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we faint not. There is a condition there. If we faint not. And the final thing that I want to leave you with is to practice gratitude. Even in the waiting, there's so much more to be thankful for. Remember the God's faithfulness. Remember his past works. Remember all the answered prayers you already have. He is still worth being thankful to 
God has given you life today. You are breathing, you're walking, you're in good health, you've got your family. Be grateful. Remember that God is with you. He hasn't forgotten you. He sees you and, um, and he loves you so much. And remember, he's working out all things for your good. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys next week.